good morning internet. It's a lovely morning actually. Early June, Sunday. Hopefully the roads will be relatively quiet. And I hinted in my last video actually that I was probably going to do a kind of first impressions review of the R9T and I noticed I've clocked up a few hundred miles now. Um, so here we are, this is it. Um, I'm also going to take the opportunity to take a ride out to Hemel Hempstead, just have a look at the old Triumph dealership that I got my previous bikes from, see if that's fully closed now. Uh, they are due to open in Watford under new management or within a new group, so they've changed from uh, Hearts Triumph within the Palmers group to Triumph North London within the Lind group. So I'm just going to see if there's anyone at the old place. May say hello if there are, if there is anyone. Um, then I'm going to head out on some uh, twisties. And before I do that, I'm, I'm going to stop off fairly shortly, actually, if I can, and just have a bit of a walk around of the bike and show you what's what. Talk very high level about the spec, although this isn't going to be a technical review, it's more going to be a kind of layman's owner's review after you know, a couple of weeks and a few hundred miles. So I hope you enjoy it and I will catch you in a moment. Well here we are, hopefully it's not too windy. So this is my new, well not new now, I've had it about three weeks or four weeks. Anyway, this is my almost new BMW uh, R9T. It's the uh, classic model, uh, but it certainly isn't stock. Um, and I'll just give you a quick rundown of what's on the bike before I talk about the spec in any way. So first of all, the paintwork uh, is not the standard paintwork it comes in black as as standard as stock this is um bmw burnt orange and burnt orange flake and i think probably if you look at the front fender and the center strip of the tank you can see that there's two different shades there it's absolutely amazing in the metal it's very very metallic in fact uh, it's got a few modifications on it so um, front fork protectors you can probably see there some engine protectors they're BMW I've just popped some uh, Pouge bar end mirrors on it it's got a dart fly screen um, what else have we got down here uh, rear hugger I've just taken the uh, servo and flapper valve off the exhaust system and replaced it with a plain pipe so anyone who knows what I'm talking about will see uh, what I mean, but I won't dwell on that because it's not particularly important, just makes the noise at low revs a little bit better. It's got a unit garage uh, rack. Let's come around the front and see what we've got. A carbon fender extender on the front uh, and a Rizoma um, swing arm mounted license plate holder. And I think that's probably it. Um, so let me just take a step back so you can see it more clearly. Absolutely beautiful. So the R9T is what BMW call their heritage line. Uh, other manufacturers would call it a modern classic or, I don't know, retro naked bike. It's kind of reminiscent of the bikes that uh, BMW Motorrad were producing in the 1970s and 1980s, which I, which I grew up with actually. Um, it's a 1200cc boxer engine, so it's a, f so it's a f flat twin. You've got those big uh, engine casings sticking out either side of the bike. And it also, because of that, it, ha it has a longitudinal crank, which means that if you're sitting on it, or even riding slowly, and you give it some revs, the bike rocks to the right very noticeably. It's absolutely amazing, such beautiful character um, that engine has. Um, it makes a maximum of 110 brake horsepower, top speed of about 135 miles an hour on a good day. I think uh, the, the, the manual or the website probably says 130. 
Um, but the important thing is that it produces 116 newton meters of torque. I think peak torque is around 6,000 revs, but, um, but you can feel it throughout the rev band. It's quite a linear power delivery. So um, it really is incredibly torquey and much more so than my street uh, triple or my street twin that um, were about two thirds of that figure, both of them. Uh, let's see, front forks. Now I think that these are, they're made by Saks, and I think they're a non-adjustable version of the forks that were fitted to the S1000R. I might be wrong, but I have read that somewhere. Um, anyway, they're reasonably effective, and a uh, single shock absorber on the back, which is adjustable for preload and damping. Um, I might at some point upgrade the suspension. I'm looking at Wilbur's and uh, Andrianus uh, for the front forks. So Wilbur for the sh Wilbur's for the shocks. So something might happen in that respect soon. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, dual discs at the front with four pots Brembo calipers. Single disc at the rear. Uh, with it says a BMW caliper, a branded caliper on it, but it's actually a a Brembo again and of course the two things in terms of maintenance that are important here are firstly that this is shaft driven not chain driven so the dreaded chain maintenance is now a thing of the past and also it's air cooled well it's air and oil cooled 70% air 30% oil that's the oil reservoir that you can see I've just put a in fact there's another there's another modification I've put a um, the oil cooler guard from Evotech on it the other day um, but underneath there is what looks like a little mini radiator. I will very quickly um, go through the I'll just straighten this up a bit, go through the dash okay so uh, analog clocks showing the uh, speed and revs per minute um, and then there's a small uh, there's a small uh, digital display in the middle you, uh, as it's set at the moment it's got the clock at the top trip meter one showing that since I reset it when I fueled up I've done 39.2 miles average fuel consumption is showing at the moment that's 46 miles per gallon and there's an engine uh, sorry a gear indicator at the bottom i'll just quickly toggle through what you can do here uh, so this is trip one uh trip two so i've done 445 miles since i bought the bike and the total mileage on the odometer is 4271 so i'll put that back um, and if I toggle the info switch, it's currently showing uh, average miles per gallon. That is showing, or it would show, actual miles per gallon. And this would show average speed, but I like uh, to see what I'm doing per gallon on an average basis, so I keep it on that. And I think that's probably it. Um, Anything more to tell you? No, I don't think so. I'll give you one more look and then we will call it a day. Immediate impressions in terms of a difference from my street twin. Uh, I suppose two things. One, it's a lot heavier and takes a lot more riding. Um, the, speed, the street twin is remarkably agile and light. Um, this is something like 489 uh, pounds wet. I can't remember what that is in kilos, but I think it's over 200 uh, kilos. It's about five stone heavier than my uh, than my street triple. So that's quite a that's quite a lot of weight in terms of a difference. Um, but the other thing I would say is that. It just has more, this bike has more character. The reason I traded was I wanted to get back onto a kind of modern classic style of bike. 
But the Street Triple was so perfect a ride that it almost, apart from being very quick, it was almost quite bland. Whereas this, you know, every minute you're on the bike, it's kind of fun. And I find myself smiling sometimes for no reason other than I'm enjoying my engagement with the bike, which feels quite real. I feel like I have to ride this bike and at times I almost felt like the street triple was riding me, was taking me for a ride. So um, I know what I mean anyway, it might sound a bit daft. I do hate this junction normally but that's a nice... Right, let me just open her up a little bit. She'll happily go along at about 4,000 revs on the speed limit. No strain at all on the engine. And what's more, it's possibly as a consequence of the fly screen, the dark fly screen that you can see on the front here. Um, there's very little wind uh, buffeting. There's certainly no turbulence. And, you know, I, at the kind of speeds where I was really feeling the wind on my street triple, it's not that noticeable on this bike. So it's very comfortable at motorway speeds and particularly so for a naked bike. The three I've had is certainly um, the best in that respect by some margin. One thing that bothers me actually about the very basic nature of the information relayed on the dashboard is that it's an air-cooled engine which means if you're in traffic or stationary for whatever reason for any period of time it's going to get quite hot and there's not even aside from the fact there's no temperature gauge on the dash there's not even a temperature warning light uh, on these 2016 models I think that might have changed in 2017 or possibly 2018 but certainly there's a temperature warning light and I believe a temperature gauge on the more on the more recent models I think that was something of an oversight um, aside from that minor niggle uh, sorry this is just showing you that at 70 miles an hour 4,000 revs in sixth gear makes it pretty comfortable so aside from that minor niggle, the only other thing I don't like, <coughs> excuse me, the only other thing I don't like is the speedo, which I find quite hard to read at times. At least a quick glance doesn't necessarily uh, give me the instant recognition of speed that I'm after. So I am just looking at, at the moment at aftermarket possibilities and there are a couple in terms of replacement uh, dials. But, you know, if I keep this, it genuinely isn't a problem. Um, and so it's, you know, the two, the two little niggles that I have are both connected to the instrument cluster and they're not particularly important. In terms of the ride though, I just have no issues whatsoever. It's an absolute joy. There's so much torque in this Boxster, this Boxster engine. Um, and it's very linear. Uh, so even quite low down in the rev band, um, there's loads of power, uh, which is particularly handy riding in town, where it's a bit stop-start, and there are times when you want to pull away from lights quickly or just get yourself out of... A situation so that's no problem at all uh, even though 110 brake horsepower isn't a massive output for a large engine and a heavy bike um, another difference I suppose compared to the triple is that this is a this is a, a dry hydraulic clutch 
uh, the triple had a slipper clutch which I suppose gave you a bit of comfort in terms of uh, being a genuine kind of rider aid uh, but like I was saying earlier this really has no rider aids other than ABS which is a legal requirement it's a Euro 3 bike not Euro 4 um, it really is a purist spike and so you know that just goes with the that just goes with the territory as far as I'm concerned handling um, very hard to say without giving the wrong impression it handles absolutely beautifully and with and being a boxer engine the weight is very low down and so it doesn't feel heavy uh, when you're riding um, whereas it does feel quite heavy when you're stationary or moving very slowly <coughs> at least in comparison to the street triple which was incredibly light and one of the most maneuverable bikes of its type that you could possibly buy so not particularly fair a comparison uh, much more similar, I suppose, to my Street Twin that I had before the Triple. Um, they're similar weights, and I would say that because the uh, because the weight is lower down on this bike, even though it's a larger bike, it's probably easier to wheel around and manoeuvre at very slow speeds than the Street Twin was, and the Street Twin wasn't difficult. So. Um, you know, no problem there. It's also a relatively low seat. I think it's 805 millimeters. It might, I might have got that wrong. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I have a 30 inch inseam and I can flat foot it easily on both sides. So, uh, so again, no issue there at all. If I wasn't talking so much, I would have remembered to indicate. So we're very close now to um, to what was until recently Hearts Triumph, and I really did just want to go and have a look uh, and see if they're completely shut or whether the, there's anyone um, wandering around. I haven't yet told Ben, who sold me both my previous bikes, uh, <laughs> that I've deserted the Triumph fold for now. I'm not sure if it'll be forever, because at some point I'd really like to try to own, I should say, a uh, Thruxton R, but for now it's certainly the case, so I'm just going to pull into the left in a second um, and see where we stand. Yes, there's my answer. Well, I've just had a nice chat with a couple of Eastern European guys that were hanging around outside what was Hertfordshire Triumph, there's no sign of the bike dealership now other than a sign above the door and that whole area is being used by uh, the Palmer's group for their car sales which were next door anyway so I'm just going to head up uh, to a couple of roundabouts and then I know there are some decent twisties over there um, for your entertainment and then I'll be heading back home. So I can't remember, excuse me, my, I can't remember uh, what I was saying when I, when I stopped then. Um, so I'll just talk generally about 
my feelings uh, about the bike having had it for a couple of weeks and I touched on the main point earlier which is it's just so much fun um, more so than the triple even though the triple was eminently more maneuverable and flickable it was lighter it was a perfect bike this has so much character in the way it responds uh, and the way that it feels when you're riding it um, there's no real comparison it, I just smile the whole time I'm on it uh, particularly when I'm not in traffic which I am now and when the sun is shining which it isn't now uh, but still you can't win them all um, has more talk than I was expecting um, uh, I did test the bike uh, this particular bike for about an hour uh, before I agreed to buy it um, but I guess I was being a little bit careful on it and I've been uh, willing to open it up and a little bit more since I've owned it and the torque really is quite outstanding and it's much more torquey in fact than either of my previous two bikes my street twin made about uh, I think it was 84 newton meters of torque the street, the street triple theoretically made 77 newton meters but way up the band at something like nine and a half thousand revs and one of the reasons I was open to change is that I never took the bike above 8,000 revs you know I've got a it's effectively a, sport, a naked sports bike and I'm not a sports bike person uh, so I like to hover halfway up the band and I want torque to be available um, in those areas and this you know, just has oodles um, in fact you, I could almost compare this to the street twin which was the kind of bike I wanted rather than the street triple which just sucked me in because of its speed if I compare this to the Street Twin, there were certain things that made me change that bike after I'd had it not very long. One, it needed a sixth gear and it needed more top end power. Um, it was only 54 brake horsepower and it was only a five speed gearbox. Those things bothered me a lot because I do use the bike on uh, fast dual carriageways and motorways so and I want to know there's power available um, about the street twin was the brakes they were okay but I had a single disc with I think a Nissin two pot caliper on the front and I wanted something I just felt uncomfortable I felt like I wanted something better um, and this has uh, dual discs at the front and four pop Brembo calipers which have fantastic stopping power albeit that there's a little bit of play in the lever before they kick in I have had BMW in Welling Garden City uh, Lind Motorrad I should say I have had them look at it and make some adjustments also to the throttle that had a little bit of a uh, little bit of play in it uh, and they've and they've done what I wanted them to do which is to make it much more comfortable and usable um, but it's, you know, it's a cable, it's a cable operated throttle, it's not ride by wire, so it's going to be a little bit quirky. And uh, the brakes are the same on, on all 90s. There's a little bit of play in the lever uh, before the brakes kick in. When they do, they are, you know, they're, they're quality brakes. Um, so I've got absolutely no complaint with them at all. The seat seems very comfortable. Uh, I haven't done more than I think three hours was the most I've been in it. But you would expect if you were going to suffer any discomfort that you would have suffered it by three hours. So I don't think there's an issue at all with the, uh, with the seat. I do have... I negotiated as part of the deal an additional scrambler seat which is more padded, slightly thicker, 
Um, and I'm about to send that away to be reupholstered and to have a slight hump or maybe just a raise on the pillion seat area. Uh, it's going to be upholstered in black with, or with orange piping and stitching, so it should look great when it comes back. Oh, the other minor niggle I have with the bike is that there's literally no storage at all. So there's no, there's nothing under the, um, there's nothing under the seats to put a lock or, you know, a pair of sunglasses or a phone. Uh, whatever you bring with you, you need to be carrying. So it did come with a, a SW Motec. Uh, there it is, uh, lock ring on the, on the fuel tank. And so I'm going to, they do a, a sort of micro tank bag, I think it's about two and a half litres that will snap straight onto that. And I'm going to order one of those and use it, you know, particularly if I'm taking the bike into town and parking up, I can't, I, I'm not prepared to do that without, um, without a lock on the bike. Uh, but other than the, those couple of things that I mentioned earlier, the levers, uh, a different set of bar end mirrors and the flapper delete tube for the exhaust, apart from those and the tank bag, I'm going to leave it well alone because it's got everything else that I would have wanted to put on it. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Lots of bikes out today. This is such an amazing road though. Okay, I think probably uh, that's all I've got to say. So, a couple of weeks into ownership, totally in love with the bike. It was definitely the right decision that I made to chop the triple in, the street triple, and change to this. Hello. Off you go. I think I'll just keep the camera running for a while. I feel the tapping round my neck, which suggests to me that because I was talking to those two Eastern European guys when I put my helmet back on, that I neglected to fasten it. And so, being conscious of that now, I need to pull over when I can and do the necessary. What a lovely road this is though, heads up towards Leyden Buzzard. Um, and I won't be going that far, I'll be turning around shortly and going back because I have a lot of work to do today. Um, but it was certainly worth coming out. Right, I think that's it for today. So I will say thank you for watching. Please do hit the like button uh, if you enjoyed the video. And, uh, and do subscribe as well. Um, I've just gone past 200 subscribers actually, which is fantastic to my mind. So uh, thank you for that and I will see you next time.